The river flows gently and everything looks calm. But make no mistake, this is one of the most crowded and polluted river basins in the world. We're on the banks of River Yamuna as it flows past the Indian capital of Delhi. The Yamuna is one of the many rivers that make up the Indo-Gangetic River Basin, where civilizations have risen and fallen for thousands of years. So it is one of the largest river basin in the world. and it is a very productive river basin and especially the Indo-Gangetic Plains is the main feeding bowl in this particular region and also it is characterized with the past history of floods and droughts and there are very bigger challenges because as it's also known that it is densely and heavily populated. Over 750 million people live in this river basin that's one twelfth of humanity. And one third of these people live below the poverty line, eking out a meager existence from this land and water. In recent decades, the Green Revolution has helped produce more food. But in spite of fertile soils and abundant water resources, agricultural productivity in this river basin is still low. It's a constant struggle to make sure everyone has enough to eat. The major challenges I think which are being faced by the water resources planners as well as the farmers, you know, the, the core is how best we can enhance the water productivity. That is the per unit output from every drop of water which is used. That challenge is aggravated by large extents of land being degraded. Crop yields are reduced when there is too much salt or exchangeable sodium in the soil. This can happen naturally or due to poor irrigation practices continued over time. Indian agricultural researchers are now trying out low-cost methods to reclaim such degraded lands. It involves combining salt-resistant crop varieties with cheaper substances to add to the soil. This work is being supported under the CGIAR Challenge Program on Water and Food. Here, in the Indian state of Uttar Pradesh, these new methods are being field tested. Their success will have far-reaching implications for millions of poor subsistence farmers. In UP, the low resource-based farmers and the most of the farmers are below poverty line, about 35% of the farmers below poverty line. And uh, the resource base of the farmers is very poor in this uh, uh, state. So we want to develop the technology which is having low cost and also the wide coverage to the farmer fields. Farmers have been applying a soil conditioning substance called gypsum, which helps leach away salts and sodium in the soil. But gypsum is expensive. Introducing salt resistant rice and wheat varieties has reduced gypsum needs by half, thus increasing farmers' profits. There's another benefit. Salt-tolerant rice varieties mature faster. In our salt-tolerance variety, will mature about 10 to 15 days earlier than the other varieties. So we can save the water and save the productivity of the crop and also the reduce the cost of cultivation. Farmers here grow rice in the summer and wheat in the winter. By using this zero-tillage machine, they can avoid plowing the fields this too reduces water needs by a quarter. Farmers clearly see the benefits. Researchers are working with non-governmental organizations to take these low-cost technologies to farmers. The best promoters are farmers who've already tried these out.